My name is Stanley Fong, and I'm a solution engineer here at JFrog. Our team is responsible for working with customers and in integrating JFrog's uh, four product lines, which is uh, Artifactory, uh, Bin Tray, X Ray, and Mission Control, into their continuous integration and continuous deployment environments so that they can release much faster. Uh, the agenda for this webinar is we're going to do is uh, do a quick overview of JFrog Artifactory, mostly a recap of materials covered in the first webinar. The, we could discuss why JFrog is uniquely a universal artifact repository for your DevOps, and how to use uh, JFrog as a system of records in terms of um, it's a system of record for your artifacts through the use of the metadata. Um, we're going to talk about how to leverage the metadata inside Artifactory. And we're going to show you how to integrate uh, Artifactory with other tools, like for instance, the CI servers, um, Jenkins, uh, Jenkins, and uh, other system type of tools. Um, Lastly, we're going to also talk about how to use Artifactory as a Docker, um, as a trusted Docker registry. And then throughout this whole uh, webinar, we're going to do a, a uh, Maven build. And from that Maven build, we're going to package the jar files into a Docker containers and, um, and submit that Docker container into Artifactory along with this metadata. Uh, we have a short poll in terms of uh, how familiar you are with Artifactories. So if you can take a few uh, seconds to fill out this poll. Okay, um, it's, it looks like half of uh, the audience here is familiar with Artifactory and half are new to Artifactory. So, I hope that this webinar has a good mixture of, of um, information that you can take back. Okay, let's get started. Um, JFrog as an artifactory, um, JFrog artifactory product. Uh, it's the only universal artifact repository manager in the market. Um, we have a recent addition of C, C++ package management and we will continue to add uh, more based on customer requests. It fully supports your uh, very uh, common software packages. Uh, for instance, we support Maven, Gradle, Python, uh, C++, um, and then you have your different package manager like uh, Docker, and, and uh, NPM, RPM, etc. Artifactory is a enterprise-ready repository uh, supporting secure cluster, uh, meaning that we support a multi-node artifactory instance sitting behind a, a load balancer in a in your single data center. We can also uh, replicate your artifacts uh, between artifacts three instances in different countries. It is also a high available uh, Docker registries. Um, Artifactory integrates with all your major CI CD servers. Um, it can integrate with Jenkins, Bamboo, TeamCity. And if you are not using any of these uh, CI servers, we do have an Artifactory plugin that's integrated with your Maven, uh, your Gradle, and your IV, and also MS Build. And what these plugins would do is uh, resolve your dependencies from Artifactories and also deploy your artifacts to Artifactory. And it's also a way uh, integrates well with your different DevOps tools like Ansible, Puppet, and Chef. This is another picture of how do you how Artifactory is a universal repository. From a development perspective, it supports all your major build dependency manager tools like Maven, NPM, Gradle, uh, CocoaPods. Uh, it also supports now uh, Conan, which is for C, C++. And then it also supports your major CI tools, as we just discussed. Um, from a DevOps perspective, 
it supports uh, tools like uh, you have your YUM, your RPM, your Docker, where it can take your final uh, software and deploy those to development uh, to your target environments. Um, so we're going to jump into uh, part one, which uh, of this webinar is how to prepare for a developer's environment. So let's say you're starting your first Maven project. Uh, how do you start uh, using artifactories and integrate and uh, do your first software build and integrating that with your uh, Jenkins server? Okay, um, first one I'd like to go over uh, it's more of a recap of the, the um, introduction to Artifactory webinar where you have your software development team uh, starting their first Maven project. It checks out the code from uh, version control and what it would do is that for like all software projects, it requires dependencies from, um, uh, from the cloud, for instance, like Maven Central. Um, so the Maven tools will, will, do, will need to resolve the dependencies by going to Artifactory. And then from Artifactory, if those dependencies are cached, it will serve them to the developers. And if not, it will go to a remote repository and fetch those dependencies and uh, cache in an Artifactory. So now it's time for a demo. What we're going to do is demo is um, assuming that this is your first uh, Maven project, we're going to be able to uh, go through the following, going through the steps of creating your repositories, and then how to set up your development uh, development environment with a Maven for a Maven project. So we're going to go over to um, uh, Artifactory. So this is Artifactory Five. It's a uh, uh, a new dashboard that we have developed. Um, just been announced recently. Uh, here you can see that uh, it is a different looking uh, dashboard from your Artifactory 4. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to that you can click on the user guide and it will jump you into the different user to the user guide. Going back, um, you can actually now go to the Stack Overflow where you can get your uh, submit your questions and you can also look at other past uh, questions about regarding Artifactory. Uh, you can click here to get your documentation on the REST API. And then you can click here to support for uh, submitting your support tickets or if you have any issues with Artifactory, you can click here. Okay, um, let's get started. So now the first thing you have to do before you start your Maven project is to create the repositories. Uh, to do that, uh, you have to go to the admin panel and you can click on logo. And for now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a Maven project. So I'm going to say pro webinar Maven. And I'm going to say snapshot. So the reason I'm doing a snapshot logo is that this is uh, a repository for my uh, daily builds, for instance. This is my Maven snapshot builds. And I could go ahead and say finish. Okay, there's uh, another set of Maven local repository I want to create is along the same line is Pro Webinar, Pro Web Maven. Oops, sorry about that. Maven, and I want to do a staging local. So staging local is my local repository to uh, host my uh, release build that I want to stage before I push out to uh, the production. So I can save that. And then I have one more that I want to create is another Maven repo. And now this is called this Pro Webinar. And this is uh, Maven Release Local. So Release Local is more of your promotion repository where you can promote your release bill from your staging local to your release local. Um, and the purpose behind having these three, three different type of um, re local repository is that each of these repository can have different permission groups. So in this example where we have uh, Pro Web Maven Release Local, uh, you can grant only DevOps access to this uh, repository. 
and you can actually make it read only for all the developers. So developers cannot are um, cannot what do you call it uh, or deploy artifacts into this repository. So it's, it's a well uh, secure and um, controlled um, environment. So I can save this. Okay, now that we have three um, uh, uh, repositories created. Um, summary, we have snapshot local for your daily bills. We have our pre, um, Maven staging local. This is for our release build and the staging for uh, final testing before it goes out to release. And then we have our release local where we can promote artifacts from staging to release local. And each of these repository has a different level of um, we call it uh, access controls. Okay, now that we have three uh, repositories created, we need to create a remote repository. So remote repositories are proxies to um, the, the cloud to resolve your dependencies. In this case, we have a, what I already pre-configured is JCenter. So JCenter is very, it's a superset of our Maven Central uh, for Java app for Java packages. Uh, likewise, the same way you can create local repositories, you can do a remote repository very similarly. Uh, we do have some, uh, for instance, uh, pre-filled out forms. So let's say I do a, uh, say I'm doing a Maven or NPM, for instance. Uh, we do say in Pro Web NPM remote. So the kind of standard I mean, best practice naming conventions is name your repository uh, with your package type and also uh, the type of repository. And then we automatically here we fill out uh, um, uh, with a default URL, remote URL. So I'm going to discard this. Another very important concept I'm going to cover is virtual repositories. And we're going to go create a virtual repository uh, Maven repository for this project, and I'm going to call Repro Web uh, Maven, let's say, uh, virtual. So what a virtual repository does is it's a collection of your local repositories and your remote repositories that is used for uh, resolving your, your um, dependencies. Uh, so in this case, we're doing a Maven project. And we want to be able to resolve our dependencies from our local, uh, from Artifactory first. And we can pick, for instance, I have a external release local. Uh, let's say, I'll pick this release local. This is where we store our, uh, uh, what we call Java packages that are developed internally that we want to make available for other projects. And then you can do Maven, and I want to do um, staging logo, and I can do other projects too. Um, I can pick up from um, a host of other places, for instance. And and also, lastly, I need to specify my remote repository. And so these are all the the when when you use your uh, the Pro Web Maven virtual, uh, virtual repository URL in your CI servers, uh, and also for your Maven builds. What it will do, what Artifactory will do, it will search in the lib release local repositories, Maven release, staging release, and Pro Webinar, and then finally the remote repository to resolve your dependencies. So uh, here you see that this is the search order, it searches the, the following orders. And you can change the order quite easily by moving things around, for instance. And now you see that uh, the search order has been different. Uh, important note is that your remote repository is always searched last. The idea behind this is that um, you have a single URL to access a collection of your local repository and remote repositories. And uh, this is how you configure your uh, your Maven standard settings files and also your uh, uh, URL for your CI servers. So 
you can change the order of these repository or you can change the content of these repositories without that having going to change your uh, CI servers. Uh, you can also specify uh, by default where you want to deploy your artifacts. Uh, so in this case, we say if, if you need to deploy artifacts, we can specify using the, the virtual repository and you can designate which local repository you want to deploy your artifacts to. And this is very useful for, especially in uh, the Docker client where you have a single URL for uh, both resolving your artifacts and also for deploying your artifacts. We're going to cancel this one for a moment because we're, we already have a predefined one called Maven's virtual. So I'm going to discard. Okay, now we have set up a local repository, a remote repository, and a virtual repository. Um, the next step we need to do is to create a settings files for your uh, developers so that they can use in their development environment. To do that, we're going to do a set me up and we can specify Maven. And then um, we can specify a repository which we just created. Say snapshot local. And then we can say generate um, settings. And I want to use my Maven virtual repositories and my Maven. For the purpose of this webinar, both my release and snapshot will use the same virtual repository. Uh, but in practice, you may have a different one for your release, and you might have a different virtual for your snapshot builds. Okay, and then you can say generate settings. This is your uh, settings file that you that your Maven build, your Maven tool will be able to use. And to make this available for your developers, you can actually now deploy settings. And I can specify a target repository where I want to store this. So I'm going to put this in Pro Webinar uh, Maven Development Tools. So this is a repository where uh, developers can go and um, download the tools and as they deploy. Now, what this means is now I can go to my Maven repository, go back to artifacts, and can search on Maven development. Oh, wait. Pro webinar uh, Maven development. Development tools, here we go. And here we see the settings file. You can click on here. Um, uh, this is where the settings file has been deployed. Um, what you can do is, now how do we get the settings files to your development environment? You can do a set me up. And I can say generic, this is all being all set up. And I can say resolve. So this is a, uh, a pre-filled out uh, curl call that you can use to download the setting files. So here I'll just copy and paste, copy. Now I can go back to my development environment, which is in my Linux uh, environment. Okay, so now in my Linux environment and I want to start uh, pulling, using the Maven build to point to Artifactory. So I can do a curl call, paste. And I have to specify my file name. And I go ahead. And now my file has, my settings file has been downloaded from Artifactory. Um, I'm going to go use a, uh, a project example from my GitHub. So if I go to, um, just click here, I can go to GitHub project dev, and under this uh, GitHub, there's a project called Project Examples. Oops. And then Project Example has a, uh, a multiple of the different type of projects that you can actually use to set up your uh, check-ins and also your uh, artifactory, for instance. So we have uh, multiple like CPP projects, we have Gradle projects, uh, IV. And um, we're going for this exercise, we're going to use a Maven example.
Okay, and then you can do a git clone. Um, I'm going back to my Linux environment. So I already have my projects sample here uh, clone. So I can do a CD project. I'm going to go to Maven examples. And here's my uh, Maven project, which is a, it's a sample of a mul uh, three multiple modules. Um, I can do, uh, this is my settings all set up. I have my source code downloaded. I can do a clean build, for instance. And now the build started. As you notice here, um, it's kind of going pretty fast, but it's going to our JFrog training uh, artifacts to pull down the the dependencies. Here you see that it's uh, it's downloading a, a, a lot of uh, jar files, uh, and it's going through uh, our artifact instance. And this will kind of um, going through the testing modules, and pretty soon it will be done. Now all these uh, repositories are now stored into your repositories in your .m2 directories. Here the build is done, and developers can, can now continue doing their own developments. Okay, this concludes this part of the demo. I'm going to go back to uh, my presentation here. Um, so we kind of demonstrated how to create re your local virtual, remote and virtual repositories, and how to use virtual repositories to uh, resolve your dependencies. We also should demonstrate how you can set up your development uh, Maven environments via the settings file. Next thing I want to talk about is part two is now that the developers is ready to check in. The code is how to prepare your CI servers and more also very importantly how to generate your metadata um, that is going to be uh, attached to your uh, artifacts, your builds. Okay, first thing I want to go over is is now it's time to integrate your CI servers. Um, and it will use the same build tools as your development team has been using. Your builds are much more faster now because the artifacts are actually now cached inside JFrog Artifactory. Um, the blue tags here are special what we call metadata that it can be written and attached to uh, the artifacts. And I'll demonstrate that. Um, we do have a, a, uh, another product called a X-ray product, which actually analyzes your artifacts that are pulled from the the cloud, and also can also analyze your uh, uh, builds, the artifacts from your builds, and the kind of analysis what it does is it does your vulnerability scans, and also does uh, for known also for known performance issues. And if we identify that these uh, particular uh, binaries or packages that you have have issues, it will be able to flag uh, uh, those artifacts with the status. The next step in this process is once your CI server is done with the build, it's now time to make it available for your testing team. Uh, your test team can actually query the JFrog Artifactory product for, for builds. And it can ask the artifactory if, um, let's say, for instance, I will only take builds that have passed unit tests, or if unit tests is uh, um, past a certain uh, what you call threshold. Okay. Once the test team begins testing, and once they finish with the testing, they can also write metadata back into artifactory. So, for instance, if they were testing a particular jar file, um, once they finish testing they can actually write their testing uh, status uh, and attach it to that particular jar file. Okay, now once testing is complete and you're ready to uh, deploy to an environment, let's say for a release build, I'm ready to deploy to staging. Um, you can use your production tools like uh, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, uh, and you can also use your custom scripts. What these tools will do is, it can ask, ask uh, Artifactory, says, you know, for this particular um, jar files or uh, Docker containers, I want to be able to start deploying to my target environments only if it's past QA, for instance. Um, 
So these tools can start creating artifact genes. Says, uh, give me these, give me the artifacts that have uh, that met these certain criteria. Now, once the these tools are are able to deploy the artifacts, it can also write back to Artifactory where those artifacts has been deployed. So now you can have tools like AQL, um, JFrog AQL product, where it can query the artifacts. Artifact can say is where has, uh, but for instance, for this particular package or RPM package or container package or jar files, uh, where have they been deployed um, in my environment? So it's very useful if you have, if you want to know where your um, your binaries have been deployed to. Now, in the case where you have to do, you want to deploy your software to your customers, we have a, a product called JFrog Bintray that can be used to uh, deploy your software to your customers. Um, we support JFrog supports a, a multi. Uh, instance running behind a load balancer in your single data center. Um, this is the subject for the next next week's webinar where we talk about how to configure your artifactory in a high availability environment uh, inside your data center. Um, and then we have a product called Mission Control that will manage your multi-instance of um, artifactory deployment in a multi-region uh, environment. Uh, you can use Mission Control to create, um, let's say, users, uh, permission groups, um, repositories, and you can also configure your your replication topologies using the control across your multiple instances of Artifactory. And that has been covered in the fourth um, uh, Artifactory webinar series. Okay, this kind of uh, summarizes our flow of uh, how we see the good continuous integration and continuous deployment looks like. And the important point is here is also to the use of metadata to help you speed up this whole process. Now for demo time, um, we are going to check out, uh, as we did in the, uh, the first demo, is checking out the Maven projects from GitHub, and then we're going to configure Jenkins to the builds. And what Jenkins would do is add metadata. Uh, for this example, we're going to use unit test equals pass and also uh, QA status equals prod. Um, and then it will deploy the, the builds to Artifactory. And we're going to deploy to a Maven station local. And we're going to demonstrate some APIs on how to use the APIs to extract um, uh, some information of the artifacts. Okay, now going to the demo browser. First thing we're going to go to is uh, Jenkins. Uh, for, uh, when you first bring up Jenkins, you need to do manage Jenkins. You do log in. Okay, uh, the first thing you need to do is to bring in your uh, uh, Artifactory plugin. So we, uh, JFrog has a, a, a Jenkins plugin called Artifactory plugin. We also have the same plugin for Bamboo and TeamCity. So make sure you install that. And this uh, plugin allows you to, uh, for Jenkins to resolve your, your uh, dependencies from Artifactory and also a way for you to deploy the artifacts to Artifactory along with the metadata. The next thing you need to do is go to Manage Jenkins and Configure Systems. In here, we scroll down to Artifactory. This is where you define your different Artifactory instances. In here, um, I name my uh, Artifactory instances JFrog, and this is my URL to my JFrog um, instance that's running. Here's my credentials, and then once you feel that. Uh, fill out the information, you can do a connect, test connections to verify that it works. So that is, uh, and then you can specify multiple Artifactory instances if you want to. So now that uh, Jenkins is configured for Artifactory, I can go back to Jenkins, leave this page. Let's say I'm going to do my uh, first Maven build. Uh, let's walk through that. 
So we're going to go to configure. So this is how you configure your Maven project with Artifactory. Uh, source code, uh, like we mentioned, we're picking it up from my GitHub. And then uh, I just did delete workspace before we build. Uh, we're going to enable Artifactory release management. What this means is that uh, right now we're going to do snapshot builds. And when we're ready to do an official release build, we will uh, enable, uh, enable Jenkins to do a release build that conforms to the, um, we call the, re the release uh, naming conventions. Um, resolve artifacts from Artifactory. So this is where you specify your um, uh, artifacts or Artifactory server that you want to use. In this case, it's JFrog Training. And what we can do is you say refresh repositories. Now, like we discussed earlier, we're going to use Maven Virtual. So Maven Virtual is a collection of your local repositories for resolutions. And then for the purpose of this webinar, I'm using the same repository for both releases and snapshots. OK, this is your typical build. And now part of the post-action build is when your build is uh, finished, it needs to deploy the artifacts uh, to Artifactory. So we have uh, Artifactory server here. And we can say refresh. And uh, right now, it's going to Maven Station local. But you can also specify our um, the one we just created called Maven Station uh, local for, or release Station local for your release. And you can also specify, um, uh, let's see, pro webinar. Pro web, and this is my snapshot local. So now I am able to produce, uh, when I finish building the product, uh, the, the build, it, the snapshot builds will go to this uh, snapshot local, and then for release build, it'll go to this uh, staging local. And then, um, importantly, I want to be able to checkbox uh, capture and publish build info. This is the metadata. And then you notice here we have the, the deployment prof, uh, properties. These are the metadata that we're going to attach to uh, our builds. And I can specify. Um, Today equals, let's say, for instance, uh, February 2017. I can say month, for instance. And, these, and you can customize whatever um, yeah, uh, kind of metadata you want to attach. So when, in, when the builds are actually deployed to artifacts, these uh, properties will be attached to that particular uh, artifact. And I can say save. And I can do build now. Okay. Now the build is started. Um, so what I want to do while the build is happening, I think uh, we can wait for the build. To yeah. While the build is happening, what I want to do is go to a previous snapshot build, and or to show you what that looks like. Uh, actually, this is almost going to be done. Uh, this it's done. So. The build is done. It's been successful. Let's, let's go to Artifactory and see what it looks like. I can go to Artifactory Build Info. And it's really easy. Uh, the, our Jenkins uh, Artifactory plugin is tightly integrated with the Artifactory products. So you can jump back and forth. OK, now um, let's go through. It, it's, when you click directly from Jenkins, it takes you directly to the build. Um, what I wanted to do is kind of give you a, a kind of overview of what this uh, um, build info looks like. So first thing I want to do is actually I want to show you the builds. By clicking the builds, you get a uh, the history of all the builds that has been done and uh, that and has been deployed to Artifactory. So in this case, we have a Maven build example. So we'll just click with that. This is our latest build. And it's build 46. Uh, here, you can actually click back and go back to your CI servers. Um, and then or I can pick on build 46. Now, when you go, this is your general information. It tells you the build numbers, your Jenkins, which version of Jenkins, and also a URL back to um, the uh, Jenkins servers. Uh, for this webinar, what I did is uh, 
this URL that's, that I entered in Jenkins is not the correct one because the IP address has just changed since I came into office. Now we can do publish build modules. This is all the modules that are uh, built as part of this Maven project. And I can go, let's say, uh, click on module three, uh, this, this module. So what this module has is my actual WAR files and my POM files. And here it lists all the dependencies that are needed to build these modules. And it will tell you where, where in the artifact repositories that these um, modules are residing. So in majority of this case, you see that um, the artifacts was resolved from our J Center, which is our remote repository. Here in this particular case, uh, for this particular modules, it picked up from probe um, Maven snapshot local, which is our also a local repository. So it it uh, it lists all your dependencies and where is those dependencies that has been resolved from. So if there's any questions of uh, when you're doing your Maven builds or any other builds uh, for other different package types, you can go down this list and see if uh, your dependencies are being pulled from the right places. Okay, environment variables is uh, all the information that are coming from the build info from Jenkins. It tells you all the build information. It tells you uh, all the system variables that's used from the Jenkins server, the Java that you use. Um, all this information plus your uh, build dependencies is should be enough information for you to repeat your builds. Issues are are your uh, Jira tickets that if you have enabled your check-in servers to uh, pull in your Jira tickets that for issues that have been resolved, those will be deployed here too. What I want to talk about is uh, a really nice feature, so a favorite of mine is called diff. So typically uh, when you do, let's say for example, you have your latest build and your test team comes back and say uh, it doesn't work or something's broken. And um, their, the typical response, you know, coming from a QA team before, is that developers will say nothing has changed. Uh, it must be your test is broken. Or whatever the reasons is, is uh, development can say yes, uh, nothing has changed. So what you can do is now I'm using build 46. And now I can compare to, let's say my now, uh, yeah, all my build numbers are a little bit different now. Uh, let's say my, uh, the last successful build was build 45, for instance. Okay. Um, and now you can list what the artifactory do since it has all the, their build info, build information records stored. And this is why we call this is a system of records. Um, here we can compare, uh, your build 46 which is my current build with a known build that we know that works. Um, and you can list all the, dif the differences. So when we see here is uh, the snapshot builds, of course, they're updated because they're derived. And now we have your different dependencies that uh, we can highlight the differences. So in this case, we're, let's say we're using Java X servlet uh, API 2.2 and build 45, we're using uh, 2.5 for instance. So that can be a reason why, for instance, uh, why your current build is not working because it's pulled in the uh, outdated version of this uh, dependencies. So what you can do then there is uh, correct your, um, your dependencies in your Maven files to be able to pick up the right version, for instance. Um, so you can go through this and it will list all the dependencies that has not been changed. Okay. Um, so this is a very useful feature in terms of figuring out what has changed. Then you can also list the difference in terms of uh, your environment variables. Let's say, uh, for instance, your Java, you can highlight whether your Java uh, has changed or whatever environments in your build server has changed, you'll be able to list those out here too. So it's a very nice feature. Um, let's go back to the build. Go back to publish build. Now this is my WAR file and it's stored in the, the Pro Web Maven Snapshot Local, which we just created this morning. And I can go back to it. 
and here we go. Um, here's my newly created Maven snapshot loco, and here's my WAR file that we created. Um, and here you can list all your different permission groups and who has permission to this repository properties. This is where we list all the metadata. And here we see that we just added a property called month equals February 2017. Um, and then other properties that you have listed here. You can define builds. Um, so what this would do, this is for this particular war file, it tells you uh, which build has uh, created this uh, uh, particular war files. So this is very useful information if you want to know uh, which build has created this uh, war file. Um, on a sidetrack, what I wanted to do is show you another example of a very powerful tool why JFrog is a system of record. This is actually with JCenter, for instance. This is my cache of uh, of my dependencies that I pulled on from JCenter. And by the way, JCenter is uh, hosted by a JFrog product called Bintray, which is a superset of Maven Central. And it has all the uh, most commonly used uh, Java packages. So let's say for this example, we have JUnit. And JUnit has, let's say 4.11 has been identified as uh, there's a vulnerability or there's some issue with this particular jar files. And the question you want to know now is, is uh, which build is actually using this particular jar files? So you can go to, you can click on this jar files and you can go to general. In the general tab, it'll, it'll say it's produced by. In this particular case, since this is a remote, uh, a jar file from the J Center, uh, it's not being built here. But you can also list your use by. So what this will list is uh, all the builds that are using this particular jar files. So now, um, if you identify this uh, a particular component, in this case, the jar file has some issues, you can now click on this use by and it lists all the builds uh, that are actually using these jar files. So you can quickly identify um, which builds, which modules, which products, uh, are using this um, jar files and you can take the appropriate actions. So this is very uh, useful features when you need to identify, uh, when you have identified issues with particular dependencies and you need to know who is using it. Okay, um, I think we touched on most of the things uh, about the, the Jenkins build in Artifactory. What I want to do is now go over um, let's go back to the home page. And here we're going to talk a little bit about REST API, REST API and how to use the, the metadata that's actually inserted by Jenkins, for instance. So now um, for documentation, you can just click on this and it'll bring you to the REST API. Okay, let's go to my Linux workstation. And I'm going to clear the screen. And I do have a list of, of, um, uh, of commands. I'm going to go through some of them. So I do a cat pro. Okay, here are some of the commands we're going to be executing. Um, for instance, I want to get the latest version uh, using Artifactory APIs. So if I look at this command, what it does is um, it goes to queries Artifactory the location uh, our factory server. And what I want to do is give me the, the latest release of um, this multi three war files and has the QA uh, properties called QA approved equals true. So what I can do to here is copy and paste. Um, so what Artifactory does, what this curl command returns is that uh, my latest uh, uh, war file that has been tagged with QA approved equals true is 3.7. So uh, we haven't, in this particular example, we haven't seen any uh, uh, QA approved um, tag for other builds. So if I go to my, J, my uh, artifactory instance, 
and then go back to my JFrog training. I think the repository I was looking at was Maven uh, Develop. I forgot what I need. I need to go back and look. Sorry about that. Perfect. So I'm looking at um, Maven Staging Logo. So let's go back and Maven Staging Logo. So if I look at here, and I could do my my project scrolling down tests. Is it multi three? This is what I'm looking at. We do a lot of builds here, a lot of demos. <laughs> Um, we look at 7.1 and we look at this. It has a project properties call uh, QA approved equals true. Now, if I look at the latest build, look at more files, um, I don't have this property set. Um, but the last property I was set was is um, uh, 7.1. Now, if I change, if I look at this and um, I can say, uh, let's say review.team equals QA platform. So one of the examples I said here is uh, once this build is done, which QA team should now take this build and start testing with it? Uh, so I can go back to my uh, query, so review.team. So I can change my query and say review dot team equals QA dot platform and say this and I should list uh, 3.83 is that correct let's go back oh I missed typed so I go back here do one more time Gosh, this is what happens when we do multiple demos. Okay, so now uh, let's say I want to query artifactories and I want to see um, do I have any builds that I need to start testing with. So I can set up this uh, API call and look for review.team equals QA.platform. So if I'm in a platform QA team, I can go query artifactory and say, give me a build, the latest build that I need to use uh, to start testing with. Okay, so this is uh, one of the most powerful features of using the APIs and querying artifactories for the metadata. Um, and it helps kind of speed, the, if you use these uh, properties, it can help you speed up your development um, uh, efforts. So let's say now I'm finished testing and I want to, um, we pass it on to DevOps, for instance, and the DevOps now is taking this build and uh, is deploying to uh, different environments. So what you can do is, let's say the DevOps tool is already able to query for uh, the QA data proof status, and it pulled the WAR files and deployed it, and now it needs to write back to Artifactory and say where those artifacts has been deployed to. So. I have an example of that. Go back to here. Um, here, let's assume that QA is okay and it's ready to deploy. This is curl command, which uses the Artifactory API. And what it does here is um, I have a instructions where say API storage maven. Uh, this is all documented in the uh, wiki. So for this maven station local, I'm going to go and add a property call properties uh, deploy environment. Um, this is a property called deploy environment and I, right now it's called staging. Let's go and change that a bit. So I can say pace. And what I'm gonna do is say deployed environment equals data center um, Sun Sunnyvale. And then I can say enter. Uh, and I'm gonna go pick the right build this time. Let's say my release build is 9.4, I believe. Say update. 
So if I go to Artifactory, um, and then I'm at 9.4, and I can say Update. Oh, here it is. It's been updated. So you, here you see the deploying environment equals data center equals Sunnyvale. Um, and then uh, we can go into another nice feature of using AQL. Let's say now I know that my artifacts can deploy the data center dash Sunnyvale. Let's say I want to figure out um, uh, what, what artifacts has been deployed to my data center data center Sunnyvale. So we're going to use an AQL query, which um, we're going to talk about a little bit later, but I want to kind of give you an advanced, advanced demo of what that looks like. So I'm going to do uh, you know, let's, let's, let's see. this is a sneak preview of what an AQL language looks like. So there's a uh, Artifactory has, has a uh, query language and I specify here is find me the item which is the artifacts, find me the artifacts in repo, um, even station local. It has the name of this multi three war files, and I want to know um, is uh, I want to list all the artifacts that has been deployed. Right now it's called data center one, which we need to change. Um, actually, I could run this. Well, probably needs to change this. To project staging maven, and now I'm going to change this to data center Sunnyvale, which we just entered. Okay, and then I, what I would do here is it will list the, the repository path, the name, the path of it, when it was created, and how many times it has been downloaded. So I can do save this away. Now to execute this. I need to go and pull the exact syntax out right here. I do a curl call um, against the API search AQL. Then to copy. So click and I do execute. And it will go ahead and execute that um, particular uh, AQL queries. And here it says um, does Maven Central, Maven Station Local. The war file, the version is 9.4 and has deployed to the data center, uh, a sunny valve. So let's go back to my presentation. So in summary, we walked through how to configure Jenkins plugin. And we also uh, the demo how to use a Artifactory API. We did walk through a little bit about the metadata that is generated by uh, Jenkins and how you can customize it and how you can use the APIs to search for artifacts based on these uh, metadata. Um, so in summary, uh, the, we, we see or we can demonstrate that Artifactory can, is used as your system of record. Okay. Um, so next thing we're going to talk about is the age of binaries. What this means is that over the past few decades, we have seen an explosion of binaries. Uh, we started out with Agile, we started with continuous integration, continuous deployment, and now you have your DevOps tools, and then we have microservices and Docker containers. What this means is that our binaries are uh, getting more modular, and there will be, you know, there's more and more uh, binaries as we head off into the microservices domain and also into the Docker containers. Um, we also have an explosion of uh, devices. So if you look at into the IoT devices, we, we're going to see an explosion of binaries for a lot of um, devices that require software. Uh, it ranges from cars, uh, different IoT devices. It's no longer just limited to your PCs and web servers. So now you, your bills are going to happen a lot more often and you have a lot of metadata that's attached to your builds. Uh, how do you manage all these uh, binaries? So some of the questions you probably ask is, is this really like finding a needle in the haystack of binaries? So, so where is your artifacts being deployed to? How do you trace your binaries to source code? Uh, and picking the right one to production. And all this is, you know, these answers to these questions is, uh, how do you define your metadata?
Okay. Um, so when when adding metadata, uh, some metadata are added automatically from a single source of truth. So for instance, uh, your from your build environment, like via Jenkins or Team City, or uh, or your Maven builds, um, these uh, artifactory plugins will write. Uh, some metadata as build information or we call build of materials into artifactories. And they come from a single source of truth. We mean that it comes from your CI servers. And then you can add, attach custom metadata in terms of uh, managing your artifacts life cycles. So as it goes from builds to tests to deployment, you can start adding metadata. Um, and the metadata can include platforms. So let's say you're you're testing on different devices. For mobile devices, you're testing with uh, Samsung or uh, LG. You may want to uh, add those information uh, back into your uh, artifacts. And also, likewise, for architectures. We do have some implicit data that artifacts keep track of, and which is the size of the artifacts, the number of times they've been downloaded. Um, you can actually use the download stats to figure out uh, how many of these uh, bills the, your team has been taking for testing purposes, for instance. Um, and then you can talk about the author. Now, how do you consume all this metadata? I did show you a sneak preview of artifact query language. Um, here's a reference. So it's a very, very similar to kind of like a SQL type query language, but it's used to um, query the metadata inside artifactory. It's a simple way to formulate complex queries. Um, the example I show you is very, very basic, but you can actually formulate very complex queries. Um, it runs on your local, it, it looks at the, the local remote cache and virtual repositories for the metadata. It is executed from the Artifactory API. And one of the best practices for using AQL is whatever results that comes from the queries, it should be actionable. Um, and you can make decisions based on the information that gets returned. Uh, likewise, you can also pass the AQL queries into your Groovy code, where uh, you can do some automations based on the AQLs that are the, the queries response. Um, mostly, the, what we call the unifying concept is let's get more out of our properties. Use the properties to uh, help you speed your uh, uh, your, dev your development releases. A little bit about AQL architecture. Um, there are specific what we call domain or entry points. Um, the entry points here is you can highlight in the green. You can say items. So if I want to look at a item which is which is an artifact, um, and I want to look at an artifact that has a uh, let's say from a build that has uh, a certain properties that are set by uh, the CI servers. So your queries will look like items that find, um, and then that artifacts, that modules, that build, and into that properties. So you can walk down uh, this this diagram from items, artifacts, modules, build, and then you can get to those properties. Likewise, I can go from a build and I want to look at a certain properties that are set uh, to the uh, like custom, which called custom properties that are, are set in the artifacts. Uh, I can go to build that modules, that artifacts, that items, and then access the properties. Then the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So one of the examples I have here is find what artifact has been deployed to staging. So I can do items that find my repo, um, match war files, and I have my properties here and equal staging. And I want to list my repository path, when it was created, and how many times it's been downloaded. Uh, this is the very similar to the example I showed you earlier. Um, let's say uh, you have integrated um, X-ray into your product, into artifacts. So one of the queries you want to find is find artifacts with critical vulnerabilities detected by the X-ray products. Um, you can say items are fine. This is the repositories. It has any repository will test with war. It matches everything. And I'm looking for properties, which is the metadata match 
Um, and we have a property called alert that top severities and has a property value of critical and it will list those. So this is useful for finding, um, let's say you're looking at a, uh, all the dependencies you pull in from the remote repository. You can actually change this query to go scan through all the dependencies that you picked up from the cloud and to look to see if there's any vulnerabilities uh, uh, detected. Uh, the other queries you get return all bills that have a dependency for a license that is not Apache. So this is how, uh, let's say for your particular builds and you're pulling in dependencies and all your dependencies should have some valid, say, license. Um, and you, your policy, for instance, say, I want to use dependencies that only have uh, Apache as its license. So now you can build this SQL query to list all the package dependencies that does not have Apache as a license. The last example here is return all jar files with false file filter class. So let's say I have a class library or a class that uh, called false file filter, which has a known issue. And I want to list all the jar files that are actually using this class library. So to do that, you can build a query called archive.entry.find, give it the name of the class libraries, and would and include uh, which repo it's coming from, the path, and also when it was created. So what this would do is it go through all the jar files inside Artifactory and look for um, those jar files that are using this uh, filter class library. So it's a really powerful tool for you to query all the metadata inside uh, our Artifactories. Again, I, I, I always like the idea or like the idea that Artifactory is what you call a system of record. It has all the information uh, about a particular artifact, and it also you can also, also add your own custom artifacts, and how you can search uh, on those metadata on an artifact metadata to help you to speed up your release process. Next thing I want to do, uh, well, let's move on to Docker. Um, Artifactory is a secure cluster Docker registry. Um, a local trusted registry is a must for Docker, especially during development and usage. Um, when we look at using uh, Docker registries, usually we look from a, as a binary repository. Um, very few people use Docker for just for just managing Docker containers. Uh, majority of our customer uses uh, Artifactory to do builds, uh, let's say for a different package type like uh, Maven or Grado or NPM or, or whatever, and then they'd wrap those up in a Docker container. And then they use Jenkins to uh, create those uh, um, Docker containers. Now, JFrog um, Artifactory as a Docker registry is uh, like all the other uh, repository types. It supports high availability. It has a very proven and powerful security model with the, the user and user permission groups. Uh, you can define, like we did with Maven, uh, the different uh, uh, local repositories. So you can have a Docker, uh, let's say staging and a Docker release with different um, access uh, permissions. It's integration with enterprise systems, like for your Jenkins servers. Um, you can also do uh, um, replications between multi-sites for your Docker containers. And it works with all your different modern development tools. Um, it, you can use Jenkins to build your Docker containers and deploy those Docker containers into artifactories. And you can use your Docker clients to retrieve those uh, containers from artifactories. Artifactory supports multiple Docker private registries. So in Artifactory, you can define uh, multiple uh, Docker registries, uh, especially like if your Docker container is going through the maturity lifecycle where, let's say it goes from release, a staging to a release. So you can do Docker promotions from uh, your staging repository, local repository into a release uh, local repository. Now, in order to implement this uh, Docker client, so Docker client is, uh, can work with a single URL and which points to a single uh, Docker registries in the Artifactory. 
Now, because Artifactory supports multiple Docker registries, you need a reverse proxy to be able to map uh, your Docker client URL to a specific Docker registry inside Artifactory. So we have two methods of doing this. You can use the port method, meaning that uh, when you specify your Docker URL, you specify the art Artifactory, the uh, Artifactory server URL, uh, and then add the port number. So the port number will map into a particular Docker registries inside the Artifactory. Um, it's much easier to use, um, but the one of the the questions you have with your IT is whether those ports can be opened or not. The other method is subdomain method. Um, which means that you specify your Docker, um, we call it your Docker registries as part of your URL. Here in this case, we have a Docker dash local, which is our uh, Docker local registries inside Artifactory, and then also add uh, uh, the Artifactory server URL. So the Docker registry uh, is part of the URL. So we have two ways of being able to do this. Um, and then this is gonna, gonna be our last demo. We're gonna do a, a, a Docker build uh, using the, the Maven uh, build that we just done earlier. So we're going back to Artifactory. One thing I do want to talk, uh, talk about is when we talk about Docker, before we get into the Jenkins build, you can do a set Inside, um, oh, I don't have repository here. Let's go to a artifactory instance. Need to log in. Um, I was using a multi tenant version of artifactory. So here we have admin. I want to go to reverse proxy. Uh, let's go to reverse proxy. This is how you set up your um, uh, your reverse proxy for handling Docker. Um, in this case, we're using Nginx, and here we can you specify your uh, artifactory's host names, port number to use. Uh, but here we specify whether we can use a port name or we can use a subdomain. So let's say I'm using a subdomain method. I can just say save and it will automatically create a Nginx file that you can actually port over to your Nginx servers. So this you can copy and paste uh, this configuration and load it into your Nginx servers and it will support uh, your, um, it can do your reverse proxy for your Docker queries. If you choose to use the port number, same thing, you can go specify port number save okay um, when you do port numbers you need to go back to artifacts let's say doc whoops sorry uh, local docker docker local 2 you go to advanced features and this is where um, you could uh, since I'm using some domain methods here it, it tells you um, what the, uh, your path or what your URL will look like. Uh, and here in this case, we, uh, oops, we're using port number. You can specify your different port numbers here. And what this will do is I'm mapping port number 5002 to this Docker local two. I can change to the 5005 or whatever. Uh, and when you go ahead and use uh, Artifactory to create the Nginx configuration, it will use this uh, port number. Looks like that's been used. Okay. Um, I want to go and see. Let's see, go back to here, Docker. Dev2, and I can do set me up. And I can put Docker. And it, it, uh, it, was, it will list, give you an example of how you would do your. Um, your Docker command line, what it looks like to log in. It will give you an example of Docker login, and this is using a subdomain method. Um, let's go back 
to my JFrog training. Okay, um, so I have a Docker set up. Uh, let's go through the, the build first. I'm going to look at my Docker build. Let's try to log in again. And this is my Docker build. I'm using the CloudBees Docker build plugin, so you need to install that beforehand. And I'll do configure. Okay. Um, walking, this is pretty standard stuff. I do have a Docker uh, lifecycle script. It's a very simple script. I can show you what that looks like. GitHub. It's actually stored in training. This is all also available for you. And it's under Docker lifecycle. And I have a Docker Maven application. And look at the Docker file. It's very simple. I'm going to pull a Docker hello um, tag 97 from Artifactory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a word file and also run this command. And this is all my Docker container. So I'm going to go back to JFrog, oops, Docker Maven build. So that's what this Docker script will do. And I'll scroll down. Um, what I want to do is when I finish my Docker build, I'm going to push it to Docker dev local inside my JFrog, I mean, inside my Artifactory instance. And here's an important part. Um, so I'm going to download my war dependencies from my Maven build from uh, my Artifactory instance. Here I specify my, my Maven repository type, my local repository. I'm using Maven staging local in this example. And I want my multi three modules and I want my war file. So this is my full path to the artifact that I want to build for this Docker container. Um, here's my properties that I'm looking for. So I wanted to use only the war files that has been QA approved. Um, or you can, and then I want to do, uh, pick up my latest Maven build, uh, and then deploy that to my Jenkins workspace, another directory called Docker Maven app and into the war subdirectories. So this is a way you can specify, uh, what dependencies you need as part of your Docker containers. So it's going down a bit. Um, and deploy. Okay, now I can do my builds. Uh, I, I have a little small script that cleans up my war files after I do a build. And it moves the war files around um, a bit so that my script can run. Here I specify my, uh, my we call it repository name, which is actually my uh, Docker app name, which is Docker Maven app. I tag it with my build number and um, my registry. This is where my uh, um, Docker registry is located inside Artifactory, my credentials. And my build got Docker contacts. This is where my Docker file is located. Then I'm ready to do a build. And then I can do a build now. And we'll go ahead and actually do the build. Okay, and then you can likewise, like you can click the artifact build info. It'll take you to uh, the actual build. Now I can go to um, go to my Docker. So I think it was called Docker um, local. So this is my deployment environment. So I should be able to find my Docker Maven app. Um, let's take the latest, the build, since the build is going on, I'm taking the latest build here. You can actually, uh, I think I'm looking at the wrong place. Oh yeah, this is the right place. So this is build 53, uh, th this is general, general information like we talked about earlier. But here you see a Docker tab. So Docker info is, so list all the, um, a nice visualization of all the Docker layers you have here um, that goes into this container. Uh, you can do a command to so list what are the, the Docker layers. 
So again, there's add, is, and you can do commands. So here it gives you a visualization of um, all of your Docker layers and what's inside the Docker layer. Then you can do effective permissions, same thing properties. Um, there's no properties, I didn't add anything here. Um, so once your Docker is done, I can go back to my Linux and I can say, let's clear this. Um, I do have a previous history. Um, I forgot my Docker command. Grab Docker. So I can pull this, copy this for now. Clear. Oops. So Docker images. So I do have this. Let's remove this one. it and so docker images it's not there um oops i need to repeat this one again oops sorry Clear, paste, and I can say latest, or um, 53. And then go ahead and start pulling it. Since I have some of the um, image layer already caching from uh, my um, environment, yeah, and it will download. There you see 53 has been downloaded. Okay, um, this pretty much concludes the demo portion. So go back to my slides. Um, and we did the talk about metadata. So kind of a recap uh, of this webinar, we quickly went over JFrog artifactories and how uh, it is used as a system of records using AKL to search for auto queries. And uh, we talked a little bit about uh, using doc Docker registries and uh, how artifactories can serve your multiple Docker registries. It's also um, throughout this webinar, we've been using Maven builds and how we package it with Docker. Okay. Um, moving on, uh, just kind of a reminder we have uh, um, weekly Tuesday webinars. Sometimes we have one on Thursdays and on special webinars. So to get a list of webinars, you can go to Artifactory. Oops. Um, let's go back to the home page. You can click on webinar signups. Um, this is an easy way for you to uh, sign up for webinars. Okay. And oops, go back to the slide. And lastly, I wanted to uh, draw your attention. We do have an upcoming swamp up from May 24th to May 26th. Um, the first webinar, first day is uh, we have a full day of training. Uh, we have about four or five different classes with varying degrees covering basic introduction artifactories to advanced automations. Uh, and um, it's also a training for uh, the four different artifactory products we have. Um, we have. So I encourage you to sign up for um, early bird tickets during sale now and also um, I encourage you to uh, attend the next week's Tuesday webinar, which mostly focuses on uh, artifactory, uh, multi instance artifactory in a high availability cluster in your data center. Uh, but it will also showcase the, the major changes that we have in Artifactory 5 to support this um, high availability environment. And thank you for your time uh, in this webinar and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the content. Signing off.